If you find yourself walking around in a fog, you will also find yourself walking uncomfortably. You can't see where you're going. You don't know what direction you're heading in. And there's an urge in you to do one thing, to get out of the fog so that you can see where you're going. Maybe you've had that experience down at the seashore or somewhere else. Now that's a physical experience. There's also, very parallel to that, an inner psychological spiritual experience in which human beings are lost in a fog. Would you agree with that? What's your life like? Would you agree perhaps that you're wandering around and stumbling over things and unable to see where you're going and it's a very uncomfortable experience? Well. When you're out in the fog down at the beach or in London, you have the urge to get out of it. What has happened in Ridley that most human beings never stop and say to themselves, just a minute, my mind isn't thinking clearly. I'm not seeing. I don't know where I'm going. So my question to you right now is this. Have you ever suddenly stopped wherever you're going in life, in that business of yours, in that home, in those plans you've got? Have you ever slowed down and asked yourself, where am I going? Probably not. And I'll tell you why. Because very unfortunately for human beings, imagination has taken the place of seeing. So the person can live in imagination, I'll use a stronger word, hallucination. And in his own mind, he is quite sure that he sees and sees clearly everything. He knows what he wants. He calls that seeing. He knows what he wants. He wants a lot of money. He wants to be surrounded by friends. Why does he want that, by the way? Oh, very simple, because he's scared. He can't, he can't bear his own company, so he says, I will get a lot of friends, a lot of popularity. And this is what he calls seeing his way through life. Now, I want you to know right now that in all of you, there is something that doesn't want to see. And that's something which is simply an undeveloped state in you. That's something wrongly uses imagination, which has its proper uses. Wrongly uses imagination, and in many cases, it goes into a hallucination in which people think they see something, they believe they see something which has no existence in reality, at all. Now, I'm talking about inner things, psychological states, in which billions of human beings think that they see what they want clearly. And all the time they're walking toward it, they are stumbling and falling down. Let's see what that means. Stumbling and falling down and hurting yourself. Ah. Uh, you cried today, didn't you? Of course you did. Of course you did. You remember that anger you felt, that frustration? This is the same thing as walking along in the fog, falling down and getting hurt. Question. Listen to this, please. Why do you endure your life as you presently live it? I explained it a minute ago that there's something in all human beings that wants to remain in the fog because there's a certain very peculiar fondness that we have even for the complaints that we have when we fall down and get hurt. This means that people <coughs> would rather stumble along, fall down, and then occupy themselves with the complaints, with the bitterness, with the hardness. I am describing your life. 
and you know it. Listen to this. When you're not seen clearly, when your mind isn't working with clarity, there is something in you that says, this is the best I can do. This is the only way to walk through life is in a fog. Why do you accept that premise? Why do you accept that product of imagination? I'll tell you why. Now let me state it just as simply as possible. Listen, you're afraid of anything that is outside the fog. It is, you become so accustomed to it. You wouldn't know what to do if you didn't have a fight with someone. You wouldn't know what to do without the agitation inside of yourself. You take that, because it's so familiar, to you take it as necessary. Truth comes along and says, look, by listening to directions, by going in a certain way, you can learn to walk out of the fog and be in what is called clear ground, clear sight. So, ladies and gentlemen, truth to speaking, truth says, so that you can walk out of the fog and you won't fall down and get hurt anymore. Wouldn't you imagine that everyone on earth would listen eagerly to that advice, to that counsel, and say, please, tell me more. Give me the directions by which I can walk out of my pain and my repressed agony. Please tell me how I can walk out of it so that I can get rid of all my troubles. Wouldn't you think that everyone on earth would say, show me the way out? No, and you haven't yourself. Those of you listening right now haven't done it yourself. Because, as I said earlier, and we'll go back to it now, because of the wrong working of your imagination, which you think is reality. Look, listen. Look at all the plans you have for the future. All those ideas you have in which you're going to what? you fill in the blank, in which you're going to get married or get unmarried, in which you're going to go somewhere else, in which your business enterprises are going to work out, or you're going to do something is going to come into your life that's going to change things. Anytime you depend upon your present imagination, what you're doing, when you depend upon that to give you something, let me tell you what you're going to get one thing. And you prove this for yourself all the time. You're going to get more of yourself. Imagination empowered by false desires tells you that you're going to be happy when? Next month, when that event takes place. And all the time you live in the false pleasure of the hope of something happening tomorrow. And so this is the way you spend, or rather misspend, your life. And you do it repetitiously over and over again, not seeing the, how the combination, listen, this is very important to you, not seeing how the combination of false desire and imagination, when they come together, they produce what is called your life. Come on. Describe the quality of your life to yourself. Do you have the courage, right while you're listening to me right now, do you have the courage to describe your life to yourself? Real honestly, honesty, what it's like. Shall I do it for you? All right. You're desperate. You're scared. What a, what a terrible life it is to live in a state of desperation, of being ashamed of yourself, covering everything up. Now look, as long as you don't understand that you are indeed walking internally in a fog, as long as you don't understand it, you can't change. 
look what you have to do then. You have to study the fog. You have to study the results of it. And then you make up your mind whether you want to continue with those tragic results or not. I'm going to tell you something very clearly. All of you, every one of you, if you choose, if you want, starting right now, if you wish, you can say to yourself, as sincerely as you can, say to yourself, I no longer want to pay the price of walking in the fog. I will have the courage to see whether there is something else in this universe besides me. Oh, I see. Maybe you didn't understand something. Maybe you don't understand that you, your present inner nature, the way you think, the way you act, the way you respond, maybe you don't understand that that is the only life you presently have and that is the cause of all your pains. Maybe you don't understand that you have clung to your repetitious habits, to your love of pain. Let, let me repeat that one. You have clung to your love of pain because you don't know that you don't have to. I am telling you now, very clearly, very directly, if you want to get rid of your desperation, get rid of your fear, which is the whole story of your life, you can do so. See, it has been set so plainly before you, you no longer have an excuse for walking and stumbling in the internal fog. All your excuses have been blasted aside so that now, instead of an excuse you've used in the past, you have to make a choice. Why don't you simply say to yourself, all right, the description of my life is accurate. Of what you've said is true of me. I don't like to admit it. Of course, our vanity and conceit doesn't want to admit how bad off we are. We always resist. We always fight. Why don't you go against your usual life? Why don't you do something utterly unique instead of cooperating with what has been knocking you down, what has been causing you to stumble so badly? Instead of cooperating with it, why don't you cease cooperating with it? Now, what that means is a long, long story in itself, but I'll give you a brief idea of it. To no longer cooperate with the fog and with your your false love for it, to no longer co cooperate with it means that you say just, I said it before and I'll say it again, just a minute. Look around where you are, see how thick the fog is in front of you and back of you. And you see all the other people wandering around in it that you bump into and you say just a minute. I've been back to this tree in the fog a thousand times. I've been back to this rock. That means that I've been wandering in a circle. Any human being on earth who doesn't want to suffer anymore doesn't have to. Now, after you've heard that, again, you are responsible. If you go out of here, if you go out of this meeting and you continue to be in pain, to be in anguish, including the anguish of anger. If you go out of here, that's because you have made your choice to do something that's very, very foolish. Well, let me ask you, what would you call, what is more foolish, rather, what is more foolish than choosing to continue to exist, not live, to continue to exist the way you have? Will you please stop loving your life as it now is? Your life as it now is, is a wreck. Hmm. You don't see it. 
You don't see it at all. Because of imagination, and your wrong use of words, in which you put labels on your life, in which, in which you call black white, in which you call wrong right. And all you, all you have is a machine up in your mind that repeats the same thoughts, the same feelings, and repeats the same pains. You don't know, there's no way you can know now that there's a completely different way to go through this life. You don't know it. Let me tell you that you don't. And let me also tell you that you resist it, that you don't want it. But I'll tell you what's going to happen to you after this talk. You'll never, ever be able to forget what you've heard. And that is marvelous. It's your only hope. Because somewhere along the line, six months from now, five years from now, you're going to fall down and get hurt so badly that in spite of your own resistance to reality, you're going to be forced to take a look at where you are. You'll be lying down on that, that ground, having hit your head against the rock as you fell down and the pain is intense, and you won't be able, ladies and gentlemen, you won't be able to laugh it off. You won't be able to brush it aside, and you had better thank heaven for that moment. Something is going to have to knock some sense into you. Reading books hasn't done it. Hearing talks hasn't done it. Giving yourself advice, foolish advice, hasn't done it. Something is going to have to come along and force you against your own will, against your own conceit, to see yourself down on that ground crying out. I will tell you that is the one marvelous, beautiful chance you have for walking out of the fog. As long as you're covering up your pain, as long as you're hiding it, you will never have the incentive to change anything. Let me tell you a story that will illustrate our points up until now. There is a kingdom that was a small kingdom, several thousand people. And it got its water supply from a lake up in the mountain through a pipeline. Follow the story and see how it applies to your life. So this pipeline carried water from the mountain down to the kingdom where people used it. One day, everyone noticed that the flow of water through the pipeline was getting less and less. And of course, they became concerned because that's their only source of water. So the king who was a good and wise man, instructed some of his ministers to make a thorough check to see what was happening. So the ministers went out, and they wandered all along the two or three hundred miles of the pipeline, looked around. Finally, they came back. They came into the royal court and told the king, Your Majesty, we've found the, we're quite sure that we've found the source of the loss of water. Our enemies have been breaking open the pipeline and letting the water drain out into the desert. So, Your Majesty, we've, we've got a severe problem on our hands. We'd better increase our armies, and we'd better prepare for war. We have a very severe problem. The king said, gentlemen, go look again. I'm not satisfied with your report. Go take another look. They went out. They wandered around a while, came back. Same report. Your Majesty, our enemies, no doubt, have been puncturing the pipeline and letting the water leak out into the desert so as to weaken us so that they can attack us. We'd better prepare for war. We have a very severe difficulty on our hands, so we'd better act. I said the king was very, very wise, as a clear mind is wise. So he went out himself and inspected. And he looked around. He went to the places where his ministers had gone. 
went up and down the pipeline. And here's what he found. He found that there was just a natural leak in the pipe at a certain place where it had gone through a tunnel where it wasn't very obvious. And saw that the water was being wasted because of the leak that had sprung in the pipe. So he came on back and he called his ministers before him and he gave him a little lecture. And he said, gentlemen, I have some news for you. This is your last day as my advisors. Because I now understand you. I understand your character. I understand your nature. The loss of the water was caused by a natural break in the pipeline. Nothing more. You wanted to find a problem. Your imagination went to work. Now why, gentlemen? Let me tell you why. Because if you build up the problem, then you can become important. You can be the generals, and you can make a lot of money off of the warfare. You created a problem where none existed in the first place. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You are permanently dismissed. And they went out. You see the point? If not, I'll explain it to you. You know, when something comes along, there's something wrong, the wrong ministers inside human beings, who takes a very, very strange, weird delight in making a big problem out of it, so that there can be ego advantages, ego excitement. So, as they would put it, get your life going getting something happening out there that will give you something to do. Don't, <coughs> don't you know that when you have nothing really worthwhile in your life, that you call on imagination and hallucination and delusion to come along and create an excitement. And that excitement is your destruction. That king was very wise. He wasn't taken in, and I want you to know that you can make your mind so clear, your spirit so clear, that it will never be taken in again for anything wrong in your inner kingdom, but in your inner kingdom. It will never listen to false counsel that wants to lead you into trouble. How do you think you get into trouble? Well, of course. You say someone else caused it. No one can cause you trouble. If you're in internal warfare, it's because you prefer that over living a royal life, a kingly life. Look very carefully and remember the points of that illustration. And you see where you meet a circumstance, meet an event, with, with something in you that wants to build it up, that wants to get emotional, that wants to give you something to do with yourself. I assure you, there is something much better for you to do with your life than to continue with the destruction that you're now falsely enjoying. I'm saying that you're enjoying being in agony. It fills up a space that you're afraid to let be empty so that something higher could come in because you don't know what this higher force is. So you say, I better play it safe. You have been playing it safe, ladies and gentlemen, all your life. And look how you shake. So playing it safe hasn't made you safe at all, has it? So wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you, in your mind, wouldn't you agree that it's time to do something different with your life?